Hi. All right, so um, I went live again. The first thing I'm gonna do is come over here and kill this reference because I'm not making this anymore. I've already made this. And I'm gonna pull up YouTube comments so I can see them over here. channel. Go to Demi Morgan. With Salesforce's help, we are able to really be channel? intelligent, proactive, Already? and not just understand information about our customers, but understand. Skip that ad. It's funny that I had to watch a commercial to pull up my live video. Pop out chat. I'll make this as big as I can. Okay. So I don't think anyone is on yet. There are three people on. Would one of you please comment so that I can see it on the big screen? All right, so over here, we have the Demigorgon. Uh, it doesn't look a lot like a Demigorgon right now, but that's where we come in. Step one, add lots of fine teeth. Boom. These teeth we're going to put in at angles so that they all kind of face inwards a little bit. And I'm just taking teeth and stabbing them through. I'm gonna get myself a FID, which is a stabbing tool um, for my shank collection over here. Where are my FIDs? Ah, a fid. I saw one in there. This should not be in my sculpting tools. A fid is a different... Come on. It is a nice shirt. Hello, I'm also working on a Demigorgon mask. Well, very cool. Uh, these guys have so many... Um, I am just, just adding teeth, 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 teeth. And since this one is going to the guy who makes pumpkin teeth, uh, just to have him, for him to have as a demo in his booth, because, um, yes, th these are for pumpkins, but there's so many things that you can use them for that I don't think people think about. Well, you know, just monster stuff, you know? Um, and yeah, a lot of this video is going to be me stabbing this foam to put in more pumpkin teeth. But when I'm stabbing, I'm stabbing at an angle so that the teeth will be at that same angle. And right now I'm just stabbing them in. And once they're all in, I will goop up each one with an adhesive. They're actually, some of them are sticking out the back a little bit. I'm going to put another layer of material over the backs, so that's fine. And I think I'm going to do, how many pumpkin teeth are in a package? I should know this stuff by now. Sixteen. So each one of these will have at least sixteen teeth. Each lobe. I mean, this has a lot of teeth up here. This has a lot of teeth. So, why not? 
Let's teeth it up. Teeth, 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 teeth it up. Teeth it up. Teeth it up, both ball. Yeah, I like me some pumpkin teeth. Um, and I'm not necessarily counting how many I put on. All I'm doing is I'm saying, yep, this area needs more teeth. And I'm putting on a tooth. I've got this diamond pattern, uh, diamond plate pattern on here that I am working kind of, not around, but I'm working with. It's adding some texture to the inside of the mouth for me. And I think I might, I, I don't know. So here's a question for you guys, okay? Very cool. I made one with moving mouth flaps for uh, Universal last year. Um, they were servo controlled. And uh, I made a couple others that were not servo controlled. The servo controlled ones were not easier. They were harder, obviously. Not my forte, but it was fun to do. I'm going to put in these teeth here that I just punched. And this will tell me about how many teeth per flap I'm going to put in. Well, apparently it's more than 16. So I put 16 in from the package. Uh, did not work for them. Uh, okay. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like thirty three teeth. Um, are going to be in each one of these. Since this is going to be like a demo piece, do you guys think it would be cooler if it, um, if I left all these flaps like unpainted and like almost undecorated so that people could see just how it was put together? Or do you think it needs to be striking in that it's finished and ready to go? later, but right now I'm just putting in teeth. <sighs> yeah, I am very lucky in that I get to make a lot of cool stuff for haunted houses all over while I work at Dark Hour Haunted House in Texas. Some of that is through my shop here at Stilpy Studios. Others is through work itself at Dark Hour because Dark Hour makes stuff for other people. is quite a few teeth are going in these this head and this is I'm not making I'm not doing any more teeth for Bob than I do for anybody else um, this is this is how many pumpkin teeth it takes uh, if you guys look at the references on these guys man 
full of teeth, so many teeth. And these pumpkin teeth are just the perfect shape for this, um, in my opinion. So that's 16 teeth in here already. And I'm going to open up another pack of 16. That'll be 32. And that'll be 32 teeth in each one of those. Leave it. Show they can see the difference. That's what, that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, I might do that. We'll see. You know, I want people to be inspired to make things themselves. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go six. And I did all this the other night with uh, contact cement and latex. And they're, they're friends. They all play together. Perfect. One, two, this is it guys. This is how my night's going to go. Watch the chest sculpt video. Did I miss you mention where you got those teeth? Um, I can tell you again. I don't mind. These are pumpkin teeth. Pumpkin teeth. From uh, pumpkin teeth on Etsy. Go to Etsy and use pumpkin teeth. All one word. Uh, that is my friend Bob Connor's company. And I love them. If you're making a Denny Gorgon, I believe they are essential. I wouldn't want to make a Denny Gorgon without them. Da, 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 da. How do you paint the mask with the teeth on the mouth? I'm just going to paint everything. I'm going to paint this light and then I'm going to go back and paint the teeth uh, because I want them to pop. And um, I like these as they are, but I also think they could use a little more color. And I went a little more than 32, I think. Actually, right now I have exactly 32. And I think, I think that's good. That's good coverage. You have an Etsy shop too. That's awesome. Well, very cool. That's awesome. I'm, uh, I'm glad you appreciate the videos. The vidjas, as the kids. Maybe kids don't say that. Sometimes you just got to put them on.
This one is not attached. That's why it's floppy. Okay. So now let's put this. I'm gonna take it off the head. I'm gonna leave it off of the head form. Thank you, Horror Lord. I think it's gonna look good when it's done. Horror Lord. I like it should. You should be like Sir Horror Lord or something. The serious screen name you got there, man. So this is just cotton batting, by the way, and latex. Um, it's raw cotton, not, you know, like cotton stuffing. Just raw cotton, great look, great texture. start. And I could just like plunk these in some kind of a glue before I put them in, but I'm going to do it on the back side. I think it's going to be a hot glue. So when I get to the last one, I will uh, plug in my glue gun and get it rolling. Hey, tune. Kind of do a section, move on, do a section, move on. And I've got to keep in mind both the angle that these are going to be viewed from as well as the angle they need to be in the mouth. Uh, if you guys want to see some cool freak mouths, look up an anaconda mouth. All the teeth kind of point backwards. Um... Uh, yes, I am excited for season three. I, uh, I assume you mean season three of Stranger Things. Uh, I think I think it's uh, it's a good show. I like what they're doing. Um, I will say that I enjoyed season one more than season two. Um, it wasn't bad, but uh, I just I just like I like season one. Of course, I'm not going to say it. You know, it wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. Yeah, so I'll glue from the back side. Now these teeth, the way they're set up, they all have little barbs on them. So that they slide in and they do kind of grab. I mean, it's not glued, but it's got a, you know, it's got a hold on it. I laid this down because I thought these upper ones would be easier to do while it was laying down. I'm going to keep all them pointing towards. So when this, in my brain, when this closes up and it looks like a football head, um, that's fitting, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Um, you know, the, the teeth are pointing the right direction. Having something make biological sense, I think, makes it be scarier. Hello, DJ Lynn V again.
Вот это вот так. Вот так. I think I'm going to need two more teeth. I did 34 teeth in this one. That's a fine. Pretty easy going. Well, the teeth are smooth. This side is very smooth. But this side that I'm sticking in there is barbed. And that's so you can stab them in a pumpkin. They kind of stay in the pumpkin. Yeah. So I think, is YouTube set up so I can add, add someone to a live video? Is that possible now? Am I right in thinking that? What does this do? No, I don't want any of those. Uh, did I hit that again and make it go away? I'm, I'm not new to YouTube, but I'm not smart. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know why you didn't get a chime, Keith. I have no idea. I do not control the YouTubes. Yeah, I see the back of them look like cactuses. <laughs> so, there you go. All right. Let's uh, tooth this sucker up. That's 10 teeth, I think. I love making monsters. Truthfully, the world needs more monsters. I think the world needs more monsters because there's so many bad things out there that happen in the world. I think there should be more monsters to take the blame. And if we are able to blame monsters, we don't have to blame other people. And if we're not blaming other people, then we like other people. And if we like other people, well, then I think we'll get along better. And maybe there'll be less need for monsters. And monsters are just really cool. That's like the main reason. Let's be real, yo. Remember, I had to steal from this package. This isn't even a full 16. I'm about halfway done. So these are also great, these pumpkin tea. Um, I will put them in... Um, like stuffed animals, I'll uh, I'll get a stuffed animal and use hot glue and put them all over the teeth. Hey, um, anybody who has an Etsy store, go ahead and post a link, guys. It doesn't bother me at all when people do that. Um, I inspire people to make stuff. I say go make it at the end of all my videos. So I want you to uh, show us what you're making. Dark Nook, I would love to see your uh, Etsy store. Uh, these are size small. These are size small pumpkin teeth. And if you say Allen Hops, uh, I think you get like a free bag of pumpkin teeth with your order. So say Allen Hops when you order on Etsy. And, you know, just tell them where you, where you, who you learned about them from. Uh, I use them in sculptures, like when I'm sculpting monster heads and stuff. So, because they're tapered perfectly to come out of the mask mold, I mold them in place. Not every time. Sometimes I'll take them out. And actually, this mask in the head, I knew I was going to be punching the teeth into the petals. So, I didn't want latex teeth over here and then um, a plastic teeth over here. 
So that's why in this instance, um, I did take them, put them, not put them in the mold, but I have all kinds of masks where I did put them in the mold and they come right out. It's wonderful. Really, Bob made an amazing product with these. And he was just thinking for pumpkins to make jack-o'-lanterns scarier, which they do. stand it up and see what looks empty. Well, you know what? I put in one more hole than I have open teeth. Same size. I almost always use small pumpkin teeth. Almost always. Um, because the, the large pumpkin teeth, they're really big. Now, if I'm like, I make a dragon, you know, if I make dragons or something, the large pumpkin teeth are perfect. These are the smalls. And uh, you can see they're, you know, compared to my, I have big hands too, but they're, they're just a good size. Um, let me pull some mediums. <laughs> This will give you a good idea of the sizing of them. Um, a small, this is a small glow in the dark. And I like them because they have this translucency to them that I like a lot. Um, these look like real teeth. The mediums, not glow in the dark, they're just white. Nice, you know, but that's good. This is large, so small, medium, and large right there. Large is about the size of my pinky finger, so that's a that's a nice, you know, monster hand. Ah, Wolverine. It. Ah, See, that's a big spike. That's really good. Um, small, mediums, and larges is what they come in. And they also come in glow in the dark, angular. Um, the regular is what I use the most of, but the glow in the dark in this case, they look translucent, and I like that. And if any of the paint that I paint the teeth chips off of this, then there's their natural tooth color underneath, so that won't hurt. Didn't I need one? We'll just put one right there. And we'll say that's where one goes. All right, so now I'm gonna flip this guy over and we'll look at the cactus back. And I'm gonna take my um, glue gun and I'm going to glue the back of all of these guys. Uh, Jock Crispy, I am certainly going to Trans World. Uh, the thing on the floor is a head form. That uh, it is an actor who does look a little bit like Ron Perlman. You're not. You are not wrong. Okay, I grabbed several glue sticks and my glue -a gun. I'm gonna plug this puppy in over here. Well, I thought I was. Yes, I am.
I love Ron Perlman's big face. Okay, glad to hear that. It's a little personal, but that's cool. Loved him as the Beast. Yes. Um, my favorite Ron Perlman movie, should I say, is a made-for-TV version of The Hunchback, where um, Selma Hayek plays Esmeralda, and Ron Perlman plays Quasimodo. It's excellent. So, waiting for my heat gun, to, my glue gun to heat up. One of these days. Is that a caulk gun handle on your glue gun? This is actually a special glue gun. It is a 350 watt shore bonder. This puppy will lay down two gallons of glue in an hour. Um, every time I squeeze the trigger, glue comes out. I don't have to wait for it to heat up, and it's a, I mean, like, on a regular hot glue gun, you'll, you know, you can squeeze it for like four or five pumps, and then it's got to heat up the glue more. This glue is already heated up. It's about $250. It's not a cheap glue gun. I got this from um, gluesticks.com, G-L-U-S-T-I-X.com, and... Yeah, it is a awesome glue gun. It's a Sure Bonder, 350 watt. Also, the hot glue sticks are much thicker than a normal hot stick. These are half inch thick. These are not um, the normal glue stick size. These are bigger. And I get it all from gluesticks.com. And that's because when I'm hot gluing something, I don't want to wait for more hot glue. It, it just takes too long. It takes too much time out of my day, my name. And I need to grab a little piece of foam. Here's a piece. Because I want it to brace up this one was too low. So this can go right in there. And that'll work. Once this guy heats up and it's just about warm enough, Ron Perlman does have to ride the bucket just because he was up here. He was in the way. I'll put this back on the head form later. So. Glass and terracotta items. Um, there is a, there's some of these that have pine tar resin in them. And those are actually really good on ceramic, I have found. And I assume they'd be good on glass, too. Hello, Horror Beauty. Well, earlier tonight, I put whiskers on the Khajiit mask. It's done. Did you see the finished Khajiit mask? Because I could throw it on for you if you want. And currently, I'm, uh, I added some teeth into the Demi Gorgon. Uh, this is being made for a client, um, but it's a freebie. Um, this is a licensed character, so I don't want to make it and necessarily sell it. So this is going to go to the guy who makes pumpkin teeth so that he can, I will throw it on for you, uh, so that he can use it as a demo so that he's able to um, sell more pumpkin teeth. And I will, I will also show you the finished Khajiit, Lexi. Um, and then two more are being made. One is going to go to, I'm giving it to the... Don't Be a Monster auction at Transworld and the Haunted Attraction Association auction at Transworld. So these are two donations to auctions and this one is going to Bob Connor for pumpkin teeth stuff.
Uh, my hot glue gun is now hot. However, I told some I would throw on the Khajiit mask. I'm gonna go behind stage and throw it on and then I'll show it to you. There was a debate as to whether or not it would have whiskers. I lost, it has whiskers. Now, I just threw it on. Yeah. Khajiit has wares. So, obviously, this is the moving jaw mask. So, there's actually an under mask where this goes on first. The whiskers are actually fishing line. And there's a YouTube video on me putting them in. So, you can see that video. So, Khajiit has layers. Thanks. I work out. Because you said nice whiskers. Never mind. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this guy off so that I can work on this guy. Well, then he wants to wear contacts. So he has like, like nice blue contacts to wear. So, and he'll, he should have also have fangs on. Ah. To look like cat's teeth. Because those are my teeth. And why not? Yeah. Okay. I have Khajiited. Khajiit is a character from a video game. Again, that's a licensed character. Someone wanted it. No one's making a mask for it. So I went ahead and I made him one. Not something that I will make a bunch of. Most of what I do is... Today is like... Alan making stuff that isn't his day, I guess. Normally I don't do that. All right, let's go around and put a blopperty blop on each one of these. And it's going to run. I'm okay with it running because I'm using this as texture for the back of this guy. That's why I grabbed so many glue sticks. Gotta love one of these that comes with a kickstand, right? See, but all this patterning on the back, that's gonna be a nice breakup. Uh, yes, I will definitely be... Yes, it comes out smooth and it keeps coming out because this glue gun is so frigging hot. Now, the downside is if you burn yourself with this, there's no question you will have a blister. You will hate yourself. And uh, it'll be hot. So, the downside is this hot glue really stays hot a long time. I like this texture a lot. I might even do some of this on the inside. I know it'll paint a little funky because hot glue doesn't like to take paint, but that's okay. It's all part of the experience. They can just hit each tooth, kind of, the back of it. I'll just connect it with some swirly dirls. 
and this is texture on the back of this. Uh, now, most people aren't going to see the back of it because now maybe this one they will be sitting on a table. On actors, normally, I don't worry about the back of the head. If a haunt actor is running at people backwards, that's not a good thing. They're doing it wrong. And I, may, I teach all my actors to retreat, but retreat facing forwards. You know, defend your exit. So I got through a pedal and a, and a third before I needed another glue stick. But you can see that I'm just pouring out glue. It's not like I have to wait a long time for glue for the, the glue to heat up. I squeeze, I get glue. That is what I want and expect out of a hot glue gun. Maybe you don't have as much hot glue needs as me. I needed this in my life. I glue all the things. Yes, Skyrim. Um, I've never actually played Skyrim, but I want to. Just, it's a matter of, of time and energy. Um, I don't have the energy to devote to Skyrim really right now. Or when it came out 10 years ago, I guess. I don't know. How long has Skyrim been out? See, I'm making these nice, big, circle-y things with the hot glue. When you can use your adhesive as a decoration, that's a win in my book. That is 100% what we're doing. Okay. So that is this one. And I have two of them done. Let's get three done. Came out in 2011, so eight years ago. Yes, web texture with glue, exactly. This is, I do, I do this kind of texture on, on a lot of things. Um, I just like it. It's also fast, it's easy, it's big, you know. Um, also, it, it's, it's good for alien type stuff because of A, the way that it looks, but also it doesn't paint very well. And what that turns into is that turns into um, it being just this nice, clear, translucent patch or vein on whatever it is that you did paint. Yeah, this, this hot glue gun is awesome. It makes me happy. And I can turn the heat up on this puppy and I can just make this come out like water. Of course, I want it to be a little thicker now. And so I can have, you know, ropes of hot glue. I'm probably also going to make for Bob Connor a, uh, a Venus flytrap, like an Audrey type plant. Same way. A lot of teeth shoved into this foam. Simple shape. It'd be nice to have on his table. I think. One more way that pumpkin teeth are awesome. That's a, that's a nice, that's a neat texture. You must go face down. You're gonna go face down, you're gonna like it. For the record, I'm speaking to the mask.
think all of you guys should stay face up. Unless you're tired, then have at it. Well, I'm going to I'm going to at least get it to the point of painted and then I might leave it unpainted. I don't know. I'm going to ask Bob what he thinks cuz I think he might want it just all the way done up kind of for wow factor. This is definitely one of those things that's more than the sum of its parts. Uh, it doesn't look that awesome right now, but when this sucker is done, you know, it's going to look pretty good. I'm actually very happy with the Khajiit mask that I worked on today because that Khajiit mask, it's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. You know, it's not something that I do all the time. Um, I don't do a lot of fursuit stuff. My favorite monster is the Wolfman. It doesn't mean I've made a ton of fursuits, you know. Um, so I was very happy with how it turned out. And I got to do fur transfers on it, which were fun to learn. Um, now I've done them years ago, but I had to kind of relearn them for this and I had to make a few things up because I wasn't able to do it the way that I used to do it. So I didn't have those materials on hand. This is just a wonderful spidery goopy mess which I love. And that, incredibly painful, just dripped onto my finger. I'm streaming on the inside. That's what matters. Yeah, I'll show you how fun that was. I got on my pinky right there. Oh. That's where I used to have fingerprints. Anyway. You have a zombie snail too? My wife insisted. Okay. Let's flip this sucker over. We'll put him back on this head. We're close to being like ready for uh, paint and stuff. It's exciting. There we are. Um, I definitely want to do some glue gun texture in here. I've got a few areas that I think need it. Ah, it's tough to say. How many teeth do you think are on that thing? So there are roughly 35 on each one of these. So 35 and 35 is 70. 70 is 140. One eighty six, two hundred and two teeth, two hundred and two teeth on this guy, two hundred and two beautiful pumpkin teeth. Okay. 
a few areas that I can just fill with hot glue and make this guy a little more stable. All right, I think that's it for my hot glue gun. I feel pretty good about that. I'm gonna give this guy some texture with some spray adhesive. Hold on now, easy with giving away the free masks, guys. <laughs> Yeah, you were the only one with a guess. All right. I want to do some, I need to further disguise this interior a little bit. I can still see that diamond plate a little bit too well. All right, I came back to tell you guys something and you L froze zoned. So um, this is Weldwood Spray Contact Cement. So, I'm going to use it to get some texture on this bad boy. This will build up and be thick enough in there to hide that diamond plate pattern. Stuff is great if you use it right. You can make cobwebs or whatever. They sell this right at Home Depot. But see now, this is a this it's an adhesive, so it's gonna stick obviously, but it's also gonna glue. Yeah, I don't think like cobwebs are out of question. They would be like what's upside down webs, not cobwebs. Are we werewolves or swear wolves? And this just gives me tons of texture on this. And it helps the paint adhere to everything. But now I need to uh, take it off of the teeth. Of course, I want the teeth to be nice and clean. but it builds up this wonderful texture on the inside of there, and that diamond plate is gone. Okay, I was just grabbing a steak. Another time when I said I'm gonna grab a popsicle stick, and I actually meant that I was going to grab a popsicle stick. Normally I say that and then I go grab a tongue depressor. Gives a lovely texture to everything. And now it's kind of solidifying, so it's easier to clean off the teeth. But it is stuck really well to what it has to stick to, which is nice, very nice. You know what else is cool? The lights and see if he blows. Do you see him glowing? Just a little bit. The TV light is pretty bright. But anyway. Could I have sprayed prior to teeth? Yes, of course. Of course I could have. I am your friend. I am not your smart friend. Sure, that would work great. I wouldn't have any tooth cleanup to do. But, you know what? I don't mind it. I'm going to hit it again also after I paint this sucker because I, I like the way that that spray adhesive texturizes things. And because this guy is light gray, that's going to be really nice. 
Uh, but let me get closer. See the little cobwebs in there? That's all I'm doing. Just getting the cobwebs out of the way. These teeth are really well in there right now because I, they're glued from the back side, remember? Yes, um, gluesticks.com. I actually keep several colors of glue stick in my shop because I use them for a lot of things. Gluesticks.com, G-L-U-S-T-I-X.com actually sells any kind of glue stick that you want and glue gun. They are amazing. Um, I keep pink glue sticks, black glue sticks, red glue sticks, and white glue sticks, as well as my regular glue sticks in here. Yeah, that's such great texture. Okay, so let's paint this puppy now. Let me do a little more teeth cleaning. I didn't do this one down here very good. If there's some hangers off of the teeth, you know what? I don't think this guy's going to win Mr. Mouth Sanitation Award 2019. I don't see that happening. So I don't mind there being some Webby Debbies on his teeth. Webby Debbies. I just made that up, in case you're wondering. It's not a real word. Uh, let's start painting! Uh, this is, we're going to take us over here to Airbrush Town. Won't you take me to Airbrush Town? Won't you take me to Airbrush Town? Ding -a -ding -a -ding. Airbrush Town. Let's go with the Gorgon down the street to the place where the airbrushes meet. Can you guys tell I'm a little bit punchy and that I have been in the shop for uh, about 12 hours so far today? I can tell that I'm a little bit punchy. I'm a little bit punchy and I'm a little bit rock and roll. If you think about it, a 3D printer is really just someone who's really good with hot glue gun sticks. It's the fumes! I'm the fumes! Alright, so I think I'm going to go a little crazy with this guy. And I'm going to pinata color him. Last color I had in here was black. I need to get that out. The beautiful magenta ink that I have right here. Senorita magenta. I love it. But I think that's going to be too dark. So I'm going to go first with chip red inside the mouth. And yes, it's going to paint all the teeth. And that's completely okay. I'm going to go back and hand paint them so that these teeth match these teeth. So, let me put a little bit of carburetor cleaner in the old air brush.
Don't get carburetor cleaner on your skin and don't atomize it into the air and breathe it. It's bad for you. Okay, sorry about that. They are gonna lose their glow, and that's fine. Yes, I'm gonna hand paint all 202 teeth. And now that that is out, I'm gonna do a little bit of this chili pepper red. I know, you probably in the feed just because I live in the freaking country. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know have good internet. Yet I want to be this YouTube TV mogul. <laughs> Bad. All right. Yeah, that's the lighter of the two colors. See how that went? But what a transformation, you know? Boom. Just like that. Organic. If I had a band, I would call it Organic Panic. It's a good band name, right? This is not exactly how I painted the other ones. It's been months. I forget how I painted the other ones. This is going to be pretty close. Am I looking at a visual reference while I do this? No. The outside of them is gray. The inside of their mouth is red. Pink. It's good for you. It's fine. Take some risks. Paint this up. It's good for us. Punchy. See, I got way less on those teeth because I said, oh, I guess I could paint around them a little bit. I still have to paint them. Isn't this lovely? Don't you love making monsters? I do. There is nothing like inks for getting fast, rich color. These are from Pinata Jacquard. Pinata inks. I love it. Yeah. This guy's now pissed off all of a sudden. It went from, what the heck is he making, to that thing's going to eat your face. Too many people in the industry that I am in are afraid of color. And I don't know why they're afraid of color. Color is a wonderful thing.
because color, you know, it, it pops, it speaks. When did I start making stuff like this? Um, I've been making stuff for about 30 years. I am 42 years old. I started haunting when I was 10. And I made all the props for the first, the second haunted house that I worked for um, in Maryland. And then I made all of them for uh, the third and fourth haunted house that I worked for. Like, now to think of it now, it's like I was their 13 year old prop guy. Ridiculous. And it was terrifying. But yeah, that's exactly what it was. But that was literally before transistor. You know, haunted houses didn't have a place to shop. Unless you knew how to make stuff, you had to buy stuff. And back then, they didn't have even, like, Spirit Halloween. You had... Spencer's, that's where the good stuff was. That looks nice, but hold on, I'm not done. I have another shade of red to put on here, which is a deeper, darker, this magenta that I like so much. Scott, you're awesome with the links, you're the man. I didn't notice you pop on, but it's good to see you. Um, if I'm painting styrofoam, I would probably use... Um, no, Skull Kingdom was like the fifth or sixth haunted house that I worked for. Maybe seventh. Yeah, uh, seven. Seventh haunted house was Skull Kingdom. Um, anyway, so foam, if it's foam, I'll probably use latex mask paint or it depends. Either one, both will work. First haunted house I did, I was 10 years old. Now I don't, I want to see if there's a big difference between this red I can see it. All right, I can see a difference. While I can see a difference, I don't know if it's strong enough for warrant. I need to go a little darker. I got to darken this up a little bit. Now I have to do this to all of them in order to make it even. <laughs> But I want to darken a red. Normally you make red darker by adding green, but I want to make this like darker, darker. So I'm going to use a gray. I have a gray ink right here called Shadow Gray. So I'm going to make a little bit in a bottle. It's like a light black. You're like, light black? That color doesn't exist. Well, it kind of does exist. It has a translucency to it. I probably put way too much in here. So I'm going to darken up 
You know what? I'm going to darken up this one. I made a lot of this. Hopefully I like it. A lot of ink in here, you know. Put the lid on. So you started doing makeup demos back when the local mall had a pop-up Halloween shop. I demo the product for them. I go in and just ask them what products they wanted to move. Yeah, I mean, and those kind of things still happen, you know. Um, those opportunities are still out there. We just don't hear about them as much. And you think everything has to like go through the interwebs or whatever. I'm trying to get this material from in here to in there. Without pouring it everywhere and I'm failing. It's gonna be Alan Hops, that guy covered in ink. That's my name. That's what I do, yo. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. I have no idea. I think we have a winner. It's like a nice deep mulberry color. Yeah, see, that's dark enough to make a difference. So you can tell what that's doing. That's going somewhere and it's making a difference. Doing okay out here, but what I really need it for, I need it for in the mouth in here. And see, now there's two colors in the mouth. That's nice. That's sexy. That's an inner mouth that is delicious. All right, so now I have to paint all of this without getting anything on the inner mouth. I'm your friend, I'm not your smart friend. That's okay. I'm gonna put gray in this puppy. Actually, before I do that, I wanna pour this out so I don't knock it over. I've been making stuff a long time. It's how I make my living, and I still, I love it every day. I love going into work, so I get to make and create cool things. Not everybody can say that. Gray. Well, yes, um, they are a little bit pricey in what they do, but it's okay. It makes people make stuff, so I'm good with it. I've got some overspray on this, that's okay. 
I'm going to go in again with that red. I'm going to line up one more time. I think that'll be nice. But this guy is transformed very quickly with a really just a small amount of paint. And uh, the gray that's going on him is going to get a lot more on it. You know, it's going to get some black veining and stuff. Look at these ugly back pedals. I'm painting something gray, lighter gray. But hey, it's all good, bro. All of this will also get um, some spray adhesive on it for uh, texture. The contact, the spray contact cement, it's going to be lovely. I'm not scared. Let's just do it. Throw it on there. See what happens. Make them talk about it. It's all good. I used to do a lot of costume contests when I lived in Orlando. And one of my strategies and what I thought really set me apart was I didn't finish things to like a super degree. I made sure that you could see a little bit of um, duct tape or something. Because people think that they know how you made it, then they can relate to it and they like it even more. If, if, you, if they look at what you made and think, I could make that. You know, that's good work, but I could make that then you make them feel good about themselves. Isn't that awesome? If you make them feel good about themselves, then they'll vote for you. Texture up, homies. The This was one layer of texture that's on there. This is a whole different layer of texture that's on there. I'm disguising just those flat pieces of foam. Like cobwebbing in between them. All right, you guys can see where this is going. It's going crazy. It is 9.45. I'm gonna probably stop for the night. I got a lot done today. I got the Khajiit mask done. I got the Demi Gorgon cooking. Got a few other things going. We knocked out two robes, which are the main part of the costumes for Trans World. It's awesome. So, good day in the shop. Thank you guys for hanging out. Here's how I close the shop up turn off the air compressor. Past 20%, still marked up for what it is. Yes. Uh, what I'm spraying right now is, this is amazing stuff, dude. Weldwood Spray Contact Cement. Home Depot sells it. What this is, it's uh, cobwebs in a can. Tim the call, telling me 45 days. 45 days till trans world. So I use this for texture quite a bit. I think Dark Nook is the one who asked. See that stool? See that cool stool that has the cobwebs all over it? Cobwebby. Cobwebby goodness. You know, it's just nice. You set up fishing line or whatever, then they, they have something to really stick to. But, you know, they stay, that'll dry. You know, that'll cure and become a, a nice thin plastic. Anyway, I was trying to leave. Turn that off. Let me go ahead and unhook it. 
<laughs> I certainly could blow some dust on it. I'm probably going to go to bed soon because I have to get up at 5 a.m. and do some yoga. Working on the belly. Um, yeah, Super 77 is great too. That's my favorite spray adhesive. But hey, I did turn the compressor off. Thank you, Keith. Guys, you are all are awesome. Um, have a great night. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed your uh, Monster Bowl Sunday. See you guys later. And go make stuff.